So uh, I recently received uh, I received a question today, and uh, the question was, is uh, which tool is best for a dog? You know, and I think the question really is like, you know, hey, how do I actually get my dog to, to become obedient? And dog training tools are a big part of, be, of making your dog become obedient, but the tool in and of itself isn't what actually gets your dog to become obedient. What actually gets a dog to become obedient and to become a good family member is the way that they relate to the human. But the tool actually allows you to be able to relate to your dog in a meaningful way. So let me give you an example of one tool. Let's say that you actually wanted your dog to come more quickly to you when you called them. The tool that I would choose to get my dog to come faster would first be a harness, and second would be some kind of toy like a ball on a string or something like that. Why would I choose the harness and why would I choose the ball on the string? Well, many dogs have prey drive. And if you have a ball on the string, here I'll pull one of mine out real quick. Let's see, got one right here. If you have a, if you have a ball on the string like this, and then you begin to flick it around, many dogs will begin to chase that, okay? So that's the prey drive. It builds that excitement in the dog. But then if I have a harness and I have a ball, I would have my training partner then hold the dog back in a harness as I tease them with a the ball. You may say like, hey, Al, that's not fair. Well, it is fair because what we're going to do with the dog is we're going to frustrate the dog by teasing him with the ball that he so much wants. And then when he's at the peak of his excitement, that's when I'm going to use my command like here. I like to use my dog's name. And then my training partner lets go of the dog, and then they get to play with the ball that I have. And so this is a really, fan, you know, the harness there would be a fantastic tool for making your recall even faster. And that technique that I just described is what's called a restrained recall. But back to it, what is the best tool for a dog? Well, what's the best tool for maybe leash pulling? So leash pulling in general, my answer would be, the two and a quarter millimeter Herm Springer prong collar or the three millimeter Herm Springer prong collar? How are you going to know which prong collar is actually going to tell the dog to pull less? You have to kind of guess. I guess based on my decade of experience, okay? But if you don't know, then maybe you start with the gentler prong collar before you go to the more powerful one. But well before I actually start training with the prong collar to tell the dog not to pull, I'm going to focus on the thing that I actually want the dog to do, which is to have a wonderful time, a you know pleasurable and comfortable and wonderful time for actually being on the side of my body that I want the dog to be on. Okay, So prong collars, Herm spring or prong collars are pretty good, but let me give you a little bit of insight here. I've also used the Starmark prong collars, and those come in small, medium, and larges. I've used those collars. Um, I've also used a slip leash to help a dog to understand that to pull, and any one of those could possibly do the job, but the thing is you won't know until you begin to deploy the tool and see if you actually get a reduction in pulling. Now the tool in and of itself, like I said, isn't gonna do the work. You have to actually pair the tool up to a technique. Here's another case in point. This evening I had a three, uh, a three millimeter Herm Springer prong collar on an English sheepdog that he would keep pulling. And so what we did is every time the dog got out in front of us, I would put pressure down the leash and then get the dog behind me with pressure on the leash. Once he was behind me, I would relax the leash. I had never used that technique before, but in four repetitions, you, I was able to see my client move forward five or 10 steps, and the dog would then not cross the front of his body, and then he could get the dog to sit and make reward. So there's a lot of different tools, the harness, the prong collar, okay? You could use a ball. All these tools are gonna matter, but really what it depends on is what is it that you're trying to do with the dog? You know, another tool that people use, we use these, you know, we use the mini educator, okay? You know, the mini educator is a really nice, low power remote collar. And I like to use that tool, okay, to touch dogs. I also use it to tell some dogs no. But here's another example. Even though this is the mini educator, 
there is also the educator and the boss. And a few months ago, I had a dog that was human and dog aggressive. And I used the boss, which was a higher, a higher power remote caller, to be able to tell the dog that, hey, it's a bad idea to become aggressive towards humans and towards other dogs. And the dog quickly began to calm down and relax in the presence. And then we actually started being able to reward the dog more and more. So, I guess what it is that I'm trying to say here is that there's so many different training tools and you really want to focus more on rewarding what it is that you want and then maybe getting a professional dog trainer involved to be able to help you to understand like how do I deploy the right tool. But I'm going to be putting more and more videos out so that way you can get the insight to understand like, okay, I can't hire a pro, I can't get Al to come out to me. So I'm going to use a tool, you know, and I'm going to watch Al use it and see if I can understand the nuances to being able to read my dog and understand which tool is important. But like I always like to tell anybody, you know, you want to keep your training very simple. You want to make it clear to the dog how to win. You want to make it clear to the dog where the boundary is. And that's where the success that you're going to achieve with your dog really comes from is, is from those things.